Hello and welcome to this special edition of the He Doesn't Want a Podcast. Uh, this special edition is focused on referees and the first referee I have here is a referee I know quite well with uh, my team at Ford, it's Jim Shaw. Uh, Jim, thanks very much for coming on. No problem, it's a pleasure. Pleasure. Uh, well, wait, oh, wait until you see the questions I've laid off you. Cool. <laughs> uh, before we get to it, I just want to give a word to our sponsors. We're sponsored by Learners Ross Driving School and Jumbo Park Racecourse. Uh, so on to you, Jim. Um, tell me a bit about your history in the game. Uh, where, did you play before? Because that's always the question. Did you ever play the game, ref? Did you play before you ref? Yeah, that, that, that is one thing. You have ne- it's, it's actually you have never played the game, ref, it usually comes out yeah. with. No, I had, I had a quite a long playing career. Uh, I was only 15. I was uh, I was playing for a wee team called United. You call, excuse me, but United you call them. Yeah. Uh, it was a mixture of boys from the village and the Donegal Road and from the Murray and Seymour Hill. Uh-huh. Uh, I was playing I played two about two years for them. We were in the Lisbon League at the time. Yeah. Uh, at that time, I was asked actually to go to the Stilly. I was playing centre forward, believe it or not. Right. And, uh, I went down. And it was Neil Gravner uh, Stadium off the of, off of the Stilly Street in the Gravner Road. Yeah. I just never felt comfortable, you know. Yeah. There's something about it, you know. Maybe I was too young. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I felt a lot of players there were in their well in their twenties. There was made fifteen years of age down there. So I actually went back back to, to United. Uh, I spent a couple of years with them, but then the uh, what was the next team? That's what I'm saying. This, this is how to remember all the teams <laughs> of that. There was a team called Tilly Lamp. If you know, there was a Tilly Lamp factory in the the, the more industrial estate. Yeah, there was a team from there, and the boy had run it, put them in the Lisbon League, and they had asked me would it, would it play, but they needed a goalkeeper. Well, yeah. I had been doing goals and messing about for a long time, and I said, I know no problem, I'll, I'll go, and we went. We actually won, won A in, in the Lisbon League at that time. Right. Uh, I, I, I was enjoying it at the time, but about 69, uh, one of the boys out at the Murray Young Men called at the door and asked, would it be interesting going down there? Well, to me, it was a step up to, from Lisbon League and no disrespect to Lisbon League at that time, yeah. but it was a step up there to, to, to the Churches League, which the more young men were in. Uh, I signed for them. Uh, I was playing for their seconds. Actually, the first match I played for the more young men, I played centre forward. Right. And uh, back to the Sam, Sam Stewart, the goalkeeper at the more young men at the time, signed for Limpfield. And I had I went down to play for seconds on the Saturday. Next thing I just said, you're doing goals for the first. And the very first match was against one of the famous teams of the churches, like at the time was Lower Shankle. We were still going, as you know, in, in Elmhurst League, but the, they, were, they were the top team at the time. Junior Cup winners, Junior Shield winners. And I played against them. I was up at Molusk. That was my first match for the young men in goal. But I must have done okay. I, was, I, I stayed there then with them for, uh, for about, as I said, about 68. 69 and I stayed 10 years with them. Uh, we won four or five churches league A division uh, when I was in goals with them. I played five times for the representative team, uh, three times down in Dublin and twice up here and that, that, they, they were in goals too. Uh, about 75 it was young men then decided to go down to the, the Humwater League but just before that I was actually managed the team for a year before before that, before we went in the Amateur League. Right. We went in the Amateur League at 2C, a 1-2C. Uh, uh, I forgot to mention a very important one in between that there. Uh, it was the Irish Junior Cup final. We won it when it was playing. It was played uh, I believe in about 70, 71. Uh, we beat Lamavada United, who had played at that time at, for the old B division, and we were hot favourites to win it. We played them at Bally Clare. And we drew two each. And at that time, there was only extra time, but there was no, what, well, it's the days before penalties. Yeah. And we, I, I took them to the second match the following week and we, we beat them 4 2. Uh, the strange thing was the Junior Cup final that day was in the afternoon. The Junior Shield final was in the morning. And it was Lord, uh, it was Lord Shankill against that, uh, if, you, if you can remember, Donard Hospital. Yeah, yeah. It was St. Donard's, but they ended up at Donard Hospital, folded up a couple of years ago. That was that was the first match. The second match was ourselves against Limavati. It was a massive crowd at it, and um, we went to support the Shankle ones in the morning, and they came to support us in the afternoon. And the bar and the and the, the square, Ballyclare was quite full. 
that later on that night. Uh, so it was, so that, that, that was the junior cup medal that I got that time. It's, it's a pride and place, that's what it is. Yeah. That is promised to one of my granddaughters when I kick a bucket. She, she's asked <laughs> for it, you know. Um, we, we, said we entered the amateur league about 75, won 2C. We got the final of the Cochrane Curry Cup. Uh, we won 2B. Um, but I, I fell out with them big time. There was, mm-hmm. I'm not going into details, but I did fall out with them at the time. Uh, and yet they were my club, as you say. I still actually still wear it one of their, their polo shirts, yeah. um, but I fell out big time and I was asked to go to uh, Lamb, a team called Lambay Bleachers and Dyers, who have may go on, but, but years ago they were a very well-known team, one of the top yeah. amateur league teams, and a few of the boys were playing for it, were play, played in the Wii United team and I had played for a few years before that, yeah. and the boy I'd run it was a man called Cecil Ness, but a great football man, so I'd, I'd, yes, I'll go there, and with them, I won 2B, and the more young men I went up at the 2A by that time. And the following year in 2A, the very last match, we had to beat, lo and behold, the more young men, our last match. And we beat them 4-2. I remember, remember this play in the day, so it was. We beat them 4-2. Um, that, that year, we, then we were promoted to 1B. So we won 1B the following season. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, our land bag folded shortly afterwards. As I said, the man that run them, Cecil, was asked to go to Stillway. To run their youth team. They yeah. still only really started a youth and under 18 team at the time. So Cecil, he says he went. Unfortunately, there weren't enough boys in the back in the background to keep them going, even yeah. though we had our own ground and all in Lamb Bay. Right. Our ground was right beside the old Lisbon Rangers ground, played beside each other. Yeah. Uh, they folded up, so I don't know what to do at the time. So, uh, but Derek McKinley, I don't know, Derek McKinley was the, the kit man for Northern Ireland international team for many, many, many years. But at that time, Derek was with the kit man at East Belfast. Derek came round to me and he says, you wouldn't come to East. And I says, certainly, yes, no problem. So I went around the East and played a, played a few matches. Um, but, but that was, once again, I was never happy there because the East, East, East first and second were like two separate teams. If you weren't on the first, you weren't on the first. That yeah, was you, you didn't get on the yeah. seconds because they had a second, their own select second, second team. And there was two goalkeepers. There was myself, who actually went on to play for Glen Thorn, Trevor McCulloch. Yeah. Trevor was in, me and him shared it for a while, you know, and that stuff wasn't doing me. You were going on a Saturday and sitting on the bench. You weren't getting on, you know, yeah. and I said, no, no, that's no, that's no good. On my way back, I, I, at that opportunity, I got an opportunity to go to the Murray Rack. Uh, I played half a season with the Murray Rack at the end, the end of the season. And I was asked to say in the following year. But... Um, just says no, the worry young man's my team. So I, went, I actually went back to them and started to play for them again. A uh, few years, a few couple of seasons passed. I actually was playing more or less for the young man's seconds at the time, but I was quite happy. I was getting a match. Yeah. Uh, I decided then I was involved with Hillsborough Boys big time. I was actually chairman of Hillsborough Boys at the time, at the time in Old right. Bailey's in And uh, I decided then I would concentrate with, with them. It's about about 80, 80, 81, I would yeah. concentrate with them. And, uh, but there was a wee, th- I still wanted to be involved with big teams, you know what I mean? I was all right, they were only kids, the Hillsborough boys, my own son was playing, he was an under 11, under 11, under 12 at the time. All, yeah. all my nephews, I played for them. So they had the, the, the two McPherson's, one with the Rangers and things like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, Schoolboy, John, John was captain of the Schoolboys team. But a great interest then, the Hillsborough boys. And as I said, I was chairman for a couple of years with them. Uh, about 83, at the, uh, the South Belfast Boys League, that's the league they were in, they were taken by Norman Lockins. That's my playing career. But now we're going into the referee inside. In terms of your playing career, that that's you actually had a really distinguished playing career there. Really sort of um surprise now <laughs> that it sounds bad but you just I, i've just always seen you as a referee you almost mm-hmm. forget that you, you ever did play the game and not just did you play the game you've you've won a junior cup which for well actually teams... it was actually the junior cup one junior shield we beat in the final junior shield and i yeah. was it was a sad night but we were winning we were winning two nil that was a new uh large large ground castle yeah. park we we're winning two nil with 10 minutes to go and was banging young man actually, the beat us. Yeah. And 
banger young man brought on a fella called Smith, Davy Smith, who actually played for the old lower shankle team. They just changed the game completely. They ended up yeah. the beat us three two. But I always blame the manager, our manager, not there because we were comfortable at the time winning winning two 0 and they decided to bring a, a couple of substitutes were then allowed and they decided to bring a couple of boys off and bring a couple on who had been playing for years for the young men who had previously had won the junior cup in about 67 just before yeah. I joined them um, they said they gave them a wee run out thing just went up, yeah. up, up, up the left after that and, and as I said Bangor Bangor young men won, won 3-2 so they did yeah. but as I said the junior cup the representative games I, I loved you know going down, especially going down to Dublin you went down on a Friday and you played the match on a Friday night, but you stayed overnight in the hotel. <laughs> always, always a great time, you know. Yeah. Uh, always remember. I tell you a story about that. There, we're, we're in the hotel, and my brother-in-law, who actually played for Bound Dar, young man at the time, uh, we're, all, we're all in the bedroom. There's a card screen. The Churches League team, our Churches League representative team, but we're on the card screen anyway. Yeah. John McPherson, he's just died there a couple of years ago. John. Uh, never smoked, but John kept taking a cigarette or something and it was puffing away and blowing. And next thing, going to the bedroom was in fact, <laughs> he, he just kept throwing the cigarettes over. Well, maybe it was a few drinks he had too, like you know, <laughs> over some getting it out, and putting the blanket and put the blankets. And maybe got a fine for us here after all those years. Put the burnt blankets, burnt up blankets on underneath because we never went to bed. Yeah, those, those matches were great down there, you know, and they were very, very competitive. Because the Irish churches like down the south at the time were very, very strong too. Yeah. And the Murray Young Men, one of the things that did in our representative thing, we represented it to the Northern Ireland churches by winning the league here. And we right. played the, the team from the south. We played them in over two legs. One was in Donnybrook, Dublin, was one yeah. of the matches. And the other one was at our own ground, the Murray's own, the top pitch, the tip pitch that your, your sales play on it. Yeah. yeah. That was the Murray Young Men's. Brian, and it was always like a bowling green. Was it so right? It was, yeah. Oh, was it? It was absolutely. Well, I think the main reason for that was there was full time grounds men really at that time, uh -huh. and the the top grounds man in the country, a man called Sam Hanna, he was a De Murray man. His his, but it's Sam all would have been his son was the secretary of De Murray young man. Yeah. And see if anybody was on the pitch. You would have been out with a shovel chasing them, you know what I mean? <laughs> Stay away from it. You weren't allowed. He, he just kept it. The grass was always perfect. You yeah. know, and that pitch was the better one of the, the, the two. You know yeah. I mean? It's still not bad, as you know. You yeah. Know, it's, it's, just, it's used that much, you know. Kids it holds are, the rain well, so it does. It, it does hold the rain. The kids well, are yeah. playing too much in the morning on it, you know. Yeah, but yeah. My, my days at the morning, man, the morning man were great. I said the representative matches were good. The finals were great. The Diamond Cup final, one of the, the Scarlet, there's a Scarlet Cup and a Diamond Cup at the time, at the time in Churches League. Um, a Diamond Cup final, we, we played one of the finals, for a couple of finals of it, but played the, one of the finals at Solitude. And right. th there's no lights then. It shows you how far long ago it is, but there was no lights at Solitude. But the game had played, it was one each, and we're playing Ralph Cool, who, were, who had won the Junior Cup too. A lot, yeah. a lot, they were all top team. Excuse me, we were on the top team too, Ralph. Yeah. Ralph Curley, who ended up to become Ralph Stern. Uh, they were top junior team too. We were playing them in the final. And it was, it was one each. Went the extra time. Still, still one each. So, but they couldn't, they couldn't play on LH no more. It was over, so they said that they'd go to penalties. And it was... Here, pitch black, and it was at the end where the changing rooms and the new changing rooms are, where the old changing rooms were on the corner, like, but it was at that yeah. end. The penalties, we had the penalties, and nobody, so nobody seemed to know what way to do it. This was the first time they were ever, ever used, they were just passed. Yeah, well, the Scarlet Cup final was a uh, bed of solitude, too. I don't know if you've ever come across a gentleman called George Warnock. No, don't, don't, don't think so, anyway. I probably have, to be honest, just don't recognize his name. Well, George, George, George was. Only have the George is chairman of the Northeast Referees, also Referees Association for a few years. George at the time played centre forward for the team called the 15 Foot Boys. And to this day, he's never let me forget that he scored a winning goal in the Scarlet <laughs> Cup final against me. Because every time I meet him, he'd always say, Man, about the Scarlet Cup final. 
remember, do you remember that there? I scored a winning goal. You know, I said, no, I don't remember, George, you know. But he went on, he went on the referee too. And he said he was chairman of the, the, the um, Ulster Referees Association. Yeah. But that, all those playing, all those playing days, days at the time, we also uh, played summer league football. I, had a, well, I, had a, I played for a team that was called uh, Broadway. Uh, and once again, it was a mixture of fouls from the village and Donegal Road and the Murray. Yeah. But there were, there were quite a few, there two, two or three players that were playing in Irish League football. It was called the Broadway Summer League, strangely enough. And it was played right. at Seymour Hill, just where uh, Monty Pay is now. There used to be a couple yeah. of pitches in there, just for short says. Right. Um, and maybe, uh, we, we won that league, but the, the team that we have could have, could have probably maybe won the Irish League at the time. Ah. So, it, you know, it was that, that good. We played in the Summer League with a couple of years of it. And then a couple of us got together and we were on a five-a-side team now. Barry Black hears this and listens to this. He says, oh, not again. I'm tired of hearing this. Uh, <laughs> we got a five-a-seat, five-a-seat team together. It was, it was seven or eight of us. Uh, but, but a couple of good players played for it. it was Billy yeah. Black, Barry's dad, who was right. at Glen Turn at the time. I don't know if yeah. you ever knew how Billy was a great smashing player. He run all the cans. He, he run Crummick. Yeah. So he did. Um, there was Billy Black and there was a fella called Tommy Cassidy. I don't know the name should ring a bell. He played, yeah. Tommy played for Newcastle. It was just before Tommy, Tommy must have been 17 or 18, just before he sank, he moved from Glen Turn to Newcastle. And he was some player, like he always was. Heavily built fella. Yeah. Five of sides at that time, we played the Downshire, five of sides in Hillsborough, the Downshire right. team run it. And he couldn't get the ball off him. You know, he was that type of player with a flan machine called Norman Gardner, who played for the young men who played at Linfield too. It was an yeah. outside left for Linfield. It was a flam machine. I was in goals. Five of sides at that stage was played on a full size pitch. Right. It was uh, 11 or 12 minutes each way. You can imagine what yeah. it was like, full size pitch. And you needed people who could hold the ball. Tommy Cass was an expert on it. And they called, uh, he actually, the scores were done with corners as well. Corners counted. So it was one each, and you had 25 corners and they had 10. They won, you know, that sort of thing. Right. I remember in the final of it, Tommy getting the ball. We were, we were one up, they headed for the corner. Just he says, you had the ball, they, they headed for the corner. And he must have stood for about three minutes in the corner, nobody could get out there. Every time somebody had me bounced it off him. And then he, he waited and he waited and he waited and he just hit the ball off the fellow, got the car to the corner. That, 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 that put us, you know, in a safe position. But we had, we had entered a couple of competitions. They, they won the Downshire two years in a row. And he said, Tommy went to Newcastle and just after that there. He played quite yeah. a few matches. For, hey, played, he played in the World Cup in yeah. 80, 82. So he did. Um, we entered, there was Bandari at the time, which were the Churches League. They, they run a five of sides too. And they, in fact, they were one of the first teams that I can remember that run an under nine, under 10, under 11, right up to under 15, five of sides. They were all playing a smaller pitch. Yeah. And the seniors, so you had. And that was played over a full week. So it was, and the crowds out of our that there was actually batting going on, and who was going yeah. to win it, who wasn't going to win it. We, we, we won it one year. But as I said, it was the experience of playing on it, it, you were coming up against teams that they were playing on a full size pitch with five players, you know, and they were running, running like hell up and down the pitch, you know, and see after a couple of minutes, the tongues were out where we had to get used to playing it. You got the ball, you held it. You just, just hold, hold, hold the ball up. Yeah. You phone one player to another. You got to try and nearly hold it the, for, the whole the whole half. But that, that, that was part of the playing career. So it was, and as I said, I'd, coming near the end of my playing career, strange enough, I was asked to go back to the Stilly. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't as, a, as an outfield player. It was as a goalkeeper. Yeah. At the time, but I was quite, I was quite happy with the, with the more young men at the time, you know. And yeah. As I said, they were they were my club, but as I said, that that, that more or less finished me my, my, my playing career around about 80, 81, 82 or something around about that time. So yeah, it's, it it's it's class. It, it's good, good for me to hear all this because it's a, a lot of teams you've mentioned. There a lot of them are still about and still really strong teams. Yeah, you know, there's there's quite a few. Then, there's quite a few churches league. The churches league uh, you had lower shankle. Yeah. Uh, can't, can't think of a few. Lower, Lower Shankill, uh, they were the top of the team, as I said, way back when I started. The, the Churches League, them and the Murray Young Men would do. In fact, I remember a match we played, the Murray Young Men played the Lower, Lower Shankill at the Murray playing fields on that top pitch. 
yeah. you couldn't get moving on it. Three or four deep, the whole way around it. And yeah. it was a match we, we had a win. Or Shankill had a win. It was winner takes all. And I remember yeah. about him. I remember we fellow scored a goal. And he's, he died there. He died a couple of years ago. We saw him. He actually scored two goals in the Junior Cup final too. Mm-hmm. I mean, the matches we had against them, I, I, I remember playing for, playing for the Dumber Young Seconds in one of the Cups, the second, one of the second division Cups. Yeah. And I was playing at, uh, a, there was a team called Bramoth Mission from across the East Belfast. We're on it. The, the, the semi finals played at their ground. And I remember we're playing on it and we beat, we beat them. And I remember going to Shea Collins with a certain big fella, play for a big fella. You would, ne- you would never heard of him, but the, he was well known in the Shankle, big Tossie, Calderwood. In fact, the right. Calderwoods are still connected with the Lord Shankle. Yeah. I went to Shea Collins, Hans with Tossie. And I think I remember, I remember waking up nearly near home. I don't know if he shook my hand or he moved his head or whatever happened, you know what I mean? But I remember getting out of it, getting out of the van. We were all in the van getting out and said, somebody said, are you all right? I'm all right, you know, what happened? You know, you know I remember that. But that, that was a good rivalry between us as it were. Yeah. Shangle had a great team. Eric Holiday played for them. Yeah. You know, Eric was, he, yes, was, yeah. he was away a lot of years, so he was. Yeah. He's with, uh, Jimmy Bryson's team now. He's Jeff, he's up at Tonic Adina, yeah. Tonic right. He was a Cumber for a while as well, wasn't he, Eric? Yeah. Hmm? He was a Cumber for a while as well, wasn't he? Oh, he was a Cumber. Yeah. He, he's been a killer. Yeah. He's been quite a few teams. He was a standard yeah. telephone. Telecom is what they're going yeah. now, but he was a standard telephone, too. Uh, I, I knew Eric. I'll tell you a story about Eric while I was playing. I was playing for Long Bay. And the uh, Long Bay got promoted at the 1B. They're an intermediate football. We're playing the Stephen Sons Cup. We're playing shorts. He was, uh, he was with shorts at the time. Yeah. Playing up at Lamb Beggs ground. I was in goals. We were attacking. I was standing there. He was standing. I could hear this voice behind me. Jim. Jim. Yes. He says, I knew him from the this, this shankle days, you say. And I yeah. says, what do you want? Like, you wouldn't say it for us. I said, pardon? <laughs> he says, you wouldn't say it for us. I mean, I go, on, go away. <laughs> you can be patient, you know what I mean? No, that was, that was already great, great football, man. Yeah. You know, as I said, he, he took the amateur league team and all so he, for a few years. So yeah. he, he's a Danica D. He played play for Lord Shankle. Too. So yeah, he was, he's a smashing player, too. What, uh, what, what made you at that stage then when you stopped playing? What, what made you go into refereeing? What was the was there a draw to refereeing, or did you take a break oh, before you went into it? No, I, just, so I stopped playing, as I said. It was about 80, 81, 82, roughly around about out there. I was with Hillsborough Boys, as I said. I was chairman of Hillsborough Boys at the yeah. time. My son was playing. Uh, I was really enjoying it. And then there was a there was a course, South Belfast League, and the, the man of the South, Bas- South Belfast League was called John Cassidy. John, he was one of the top milk cup men at the, when it started. So it was. And uh, John got a, a course of a refereeing course uh, they ran it. it was a, I tell you where it was, it was in the, I can remember his playing, it was in the Legion Hall in Montgomery Road, off the Castle Ray Road. Uh, there was quite a few went from the South Belfast League. Uh, me and Francie, a fellow called Francie Farr, was with me at Hillsborough, we, we went down to two. The course was taken by Norman Lawkins, who's now connected big time with the AFA. Norman was at a set, he was a senior referee. Yeah. Brilliant, br- brilliant, brilliant taking a course. You know, you know he, he kept it interesting. You know, the whole way through, you know, two hours, it was a, I can't remember, it was over four or five nights at the time. And every, every, every night was very interesting. He, he, he would go through instructions, through the rules, but he would also give you experiences that, that, he, that happened to him. Yeah. And he applied some of the things that he was talk, talking about to those experiences. And it was brilliant to listen to, you know. Uh, set, set the course there, or set the, the test. And strangely enough, I always remember, the man that coaxed me to go down, Francie Farr, didn't get it. And I got it. Right. And um, I always kept Francie going. He went back and done it again. You got an orange chance. The yeah. Rulican referees desperate at the time. And maybe that's why I get through, you know. But um, <laughs> so the I stayed with the South Belfast League. John Cassidy said to me, You wouldn't stay in referee on an hour yeah. He says you, you could go you could go on the afternoon, but you, you could do two matches in the morning. I mean, you're under yeah. 11s, under 12s, or you know, at the time it was fit, like you know, yeah, there was no problem. I could have done about four matches on a Saturday, yeah. And uh, I went and to stay there, but at the same time, in the background, and it was still with Hillsborough boys, so I was doing a match maybe 
over at uh, Holly Neal at an under 10 match at nine o'clock. But under 11, I was going with my own team. Right. And maybe even refereeing them. You know, yeah. I, you know, and there were no favours done for them. You know, and I think that's maybe why they asked me, you know, to keep, it's okay to referee your, your own yeah. team. You know, I mean, uh, you know, to me, it was a match. You know, they yeah. treated them all the same. Uh, St. Andrews were one of the top teams then. Yeah. Uh, Joe, Joe Kincaid was their, their manager. He was a Ranger scout as well. He actually let him from St. Andrews' direction went over that, that, that way. Yeah. And me and him, me and him run, run the select team then. At the time, an interleague thing, I, was, I think it was under 13, under 14. But David Haley was playing for us as well. Right. You know, my own son played. So we did. So that, that was uh, that. Was that. Uh, at, and all at the same time, I also started up another team, the Murray United Churches. Uh, they were right. all young fellas. They're all fellas who I've had a, a, an age at Hillsborough. But there was no under 16, under 17. I had to under 15. The other guy went an amateur league team and struggled to get on maybe their second team. You know yeah. yourself, amateur league football, even a few years ago, 2A, 2B, 2C level, it's physical. Yeah. Some of these young Especially classes. For 15, 16 as well. Yeah. yeah. For, for, you know, they're only really boys, like really. Yeah. Different now these days, but then. So, me and an old fella, as I said, the fella mentioned earlier on, and actually, we all, who's now passed away, uh, me and him decided to start a wee team up the Murray United Churches. Yeah. Uh, we call them the Murray United, but it had to be called Churches because if we get into the Churches League, it had to be connected to a church. You had right. to get the minister. At the time, the same their forms that they attended church. Right. <laughs> and I remember a historian out there getting the, getting Reverend Dallas to sign a few of the forms. And he said, "Who's that?" He signed them like, but he said, "Who's that?" Never seen him in church, you know. That, <laughs> that's that's the way it worked then. So we started them up within the churches league too. Um, so it was refereeing in the morning. The kids maybe the second match, and then with the team in the afternoon. Uh, and then I decided to play a wee bit. They were yeah. struggling. They needed a couple of, I got a couple of experienced players today that I knew would, would help me out. A fella called Jack Russell, who played centre half for the young man for years. A fella called Davy Pogue, who was actually actually a Linfield centre forward. I'm feeling when we made right. a smash, we got a bad injury. I coaxed him to play, and they came in with the kids, and they were absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And with some great matches at, at, the, at the time. Uh, not Breda Parish, who, who are now, what? The league team, I don't know what they're now. Yeah. They used to be big division, but whatever it's called now. They were they were in the churches like a like at the time. And uh, it was great great matches then. Stephen Wellerall, who who went up the senior referee, Stephen played for them. Stephen right. can tell you some good stories play, playing against them too. And I had a few players also from Suffolk that played. Uh the, the, the present day Suffolk team, the same yeah. team it was back then. I got a few of them. The older hands, boys who you knew how to kick and how to handle themselves and deal with yeah. it, you know. Help them, away. that's it. Yeah, you could walk away at the same time. Uh, so, with a couple of good seasons of that, we actually won. We won one of the divisions in it, and we're runners up to that great in one of our divisions. So, we were. But at the time, I, I was getting the bait for refereeing, I was, I was enjoying it. So, in about 86, 87, I decided I registered with the Churches League. Yeah. There was a man called Ram McGaggy, who's the chairman of the Churches League team. He was a Big man on the AFA at the time, a, a gentleman. Yeah. Brett, Brett Brand said to me, You come along, you do it, you do it, Churches League, because he, he knew me from the, the team that we had in it. And he says, I no problem. I, I'll, I'll take it up. Well, the time, as you say, I think the fee was £12 or something at the time. And uh, right. I, I went in there for a couple of seasons. I was fortunate enough to get a two, two finals in it the Scarlet Cup and the Diamond Cup, which I had two winners' battles playing. Yeah. So I made a nice, nice, nice set for it. And one of one of the fans was actually on the line. It was, uh, I think, I'm not sure it was a Scarlet or a Diamond. Maybe a David Malcolm, who used to be the head of the referees in the AFA, if he hears this, maybe he'll correct me. But he was with a referee in one, and I was a referee in the other. Right. And I was laying, and he was laying. But that's where David started off too. Um, he went on the, the more the more senior stuff. Yeah. So I stuck two seasons of that, and about 16, 67, 68, right Around about that time, I don't remember all these years, it's difficult. Around about 67, 68, uh, I was approached by the more young man to go and play for. Uh, strange enough, I, I said, yes, I, I would go. But my first match, the more United had folded up. 
a account keeper and go on. You know, it's like I try to run myself. Yeah. I end up always running this by myself. I was washing the gear myself. The way I was, yeah. my wife was washing the gear. She cracked me in that one. <laughs> and she was washing the gear. I was trying to go on the maintenance. And the man that helped me out wasn't well at the time. And I just, you know, I walked away from it. It still, it still went on for a couple of seasons after that. A couple of, yeah. couple of boys kept on going. But as I said, a man called Sammy Jefferson, who was big in the, the amateur league at the time, was on their committee. And then he was big in the AFA. Sam asked me would I, would I be interested in going to yeah. do the... Uh, uh, what did I still say? It was, I can't remember the year. It would have been 80, 81, 82, something about that. No, it was 60. 60. 69 was at the young man, and then we through. It was about to have been. It would have been yeah. about 80. It was 18, 80. And I said, yes, I would go. And um, I went and registered in the amateur league. And I, I maybe correct myself on that, on that year, but I went to the amateur league then. And uh, my, my very first match I can remember was Willow. Uh, no, my very first match in the Churches League was Willowfield Parish in St John's, St John's White House. That was the Churches League one. My very yeah. first amateur league match was Harlowood Sport against Rosario yeah. at Cherryville. Uh, Harlowood Sporter and I Shankle. I Shankle made it, yeah. Big Jackie Pollock was with with him yeah. at the time, and Victor, Victor, Victor Taylor. I knew Victor well because he Victor helped me every sometimes at Hillsborough Pro Boys. That was my mm-hmm. very first match with him. Uh, the I went I was there about a junior level. I was in the, I was nineties. I can't tell what that was the beginning of the nineties. A junior level for about four year, five years, and within that junior level, I I was the fourth official in the Irish Junior Cup final. Uh, yeah. Talk about big crowds. The match with that final was about 90, 92, 93, as far as I can remember. It was at uh, Lurgan. So more to be part. That was the two local teams. It was Hill Street and Oxford. Right. You can imagine it was who are now Oxford Sunnyside, who yeah. the next day for there. They have a kids team. That was the final at Morgan. You couldn't get moving at it. And it was crammed, you know, even the stands was through because it was, was obviously there's that wee bit of rivalry down there between the two. Yeah. Um Oxford won it as far as I can remember. Two one. Whatever anyway, whatever the score was. Uh the following season, then I was promoted to intermediate level. My very first match at the intermediate level. But that, uh, just before that, but just before that, there, the man that looked after the allocations for the referee was a man called Bram Morrison, who went on the referee himself. Bram had packed it in then, and a new man came in called Billy Furlonger. Well, you, you know that name? Yeah, I know Billy well, yeah. Well, Billy's, Billy's an agent. I worked with yeah. Billy, so I did shorts. I don't know why, because maybe that's why I got looped off the wheel with him. But anyway, <laughs> the, uh, my very first match at the intermediate level was Killale, first coming S at Killale. Because you imagine that, it was, you know, it was like that before we went on. And some, yeah. some of the boys at Killale were keeping me going. Is this your first match at this level? You know, oh, you, you better watch yourself, you know, better better watch me Rosie down the line. She'll, she'll be shouting at you and spitting at you. <laughs> you know, anyway, this is great. But, I went with the dream, and this, as I said, that went the dream intermediate level. The following year, a the, uh, the Steel Sons, I was fourth official in it. Always, yeah. the, always the bridesmaid, like you know what I mean. <laughs> I was fourth official in it, and that was the Chimney Corner and Cumberrack. So it was the TV, and once again the big crowd, lovely Christmas morning. Uh, yeah. Strange enough, we. After the match, we could present it with our, with our trophies or mementos or anyone mm-hmm. to call them. Straight home. There was no in for a drink or anything like that. I think because it's Christmas morning, being yeah. a bit of a family man, you know, you just wanted to get home, see your kids uh, uh, yeah. for Christmas. But that, that, that was the final. The final was refereed for, from a uh, strange enough fellow from Killaway, Davy Ross. He right. refereed the final, so he did. Uh, and Davy, Davy and me were great mates over the years too. The couple of years later, I got another final myself. Finally, the finally the bride, or the groom, maybe the better way. Hopefully, better <laughs> stay. Uh, the Smirnoff Cup final. Now, that Smirnoff Cup final was as big, probably as big as the Steel Suns. Yeah, it was maybe bigger. It was all, all it was all the B division teams, in different areas. And the final of it was played at. Uh, too many corners ground, which at that stage I haven't been there for a few a lot of years, but it was a great, great playing surf. But it was massive, yeah. absolutely massive pitch, probably one of the biggest pitches at Drummond S, the two biggest pitches I've ever been on. 
and um, it was Harlemwood for Elders against Mayola Park. Kenny Shield was the manager of Mayola Park at the time. We, it was a, a two lane, obviously, thank goodness for two lanes, man, because there was no way that you were covering, covering, covering the whole ground. But the Mayola, Mayola Park won the, won the match. Kenny Shields, very hard to deal with. You know what I mean? <laughs> they got their arm on the lane all the yeah. time. But they got through it anyway. But that might be extra time. And I always remember going to the changing room. And thank great match, much and much enjoyable. Freddie McGee of Harlem Wood Welders, who was on the IFA committee for a lot of years, just retired this year. Freddie came in, thank us. You know, that was the team that was defeated. Yeah. You felt really good, you know, it made, made you feel up here. Yeah. And Freddie, uh, Freddie thanked us, she made us to come on in. He said, I, our team will have a drink for you. So just, just yeah. we had our shower and door, door wrapped again. I said, come on in. It was Norman Coy. I don't know if you came up back, but Norman Coy. Norman, Norman's a senior assessor. He ma ma mentors up and coming referees now. He's yeah. an Irish League referee for a lot of years too. Norman, Norman came in with a book. I looked at him, I said, yes, Norman. He says, uh, he says, I'll talk to two lines, I'll talk to you first, then I'll talk to lines. Man, one of them was in the show. I said, what are you talking to us for? He said, well, I said, yes, I said, Norman, you know the rule. Or a, a writ, an unwritten rule is you don't get assessed in your final. Maybe a semi-final. Yeah. Not in the final. That's, you make, you know, it's, it spoils your day, somebody come in and say, you don't this wrong. You, you do wrong. think everybody does. Yeah. And I said, Norman, talk to two lines, man, if you want. Don't talk to me. I'm finished anyway. This is my last year intermediate level. You know, that's what I said. Yeah. This is my last year. Really, but I got back to junior level in a couple of seasons. And he, he just went out and slammed the door, you know. So, <laughs> in France, we were friends and such. We were, you know, to come across him a few times. Right about yeah. that, just a couple of seasons after that, I, I decided that and I was still referee and like, still not refereed in intermediate level, mm -hmm. but I uh, was getting more interested in back dropping back, getting getting all in years. Yeah. You know, it was harder to keep, keep keep fit, even though at the time I was working night shifts. Yeah. And every morning when I moved from night shift, I had a late breakfast and I head out where I live in the Murray, down past the Murray Young Men's Pitch, past your pitch, down the Murray Dame, right on the towpath, right to Shaw's Bridge, back up the Moon Road through Finnegan and right round. I used to do that every morning. Right. And it was getting, it was getting harder. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So I'll go back to junior level. And at the time, I decided to do my, my assessors, instructors course as well. Yeah. And I'd done that with the IFA. I threw it okay. And they said that they sent me a letter at the start of the next season. Are you ready to be assess? I said, no. Still refereeing. Still enjoying it. Junior <laughs> level, happy enough. And I was doing my next year sales at the time. I said, no, yeah. quite happy to, to carry on. I don't think I could sit and tell a, a, a young referee what he's doing wrong. You know, yeah. But I'll, I'll keep the I'll keep the options open you know, for, for later. For later, uh, the instructor's course was the same. I, I was nearly going on with it, so it was at the time. You know, I'll, I'll go through with it. It's, you know, it's a, it's a different thing altogether. You're, you're talking to referees and having listened to a few instructors over there. And Norman Lockins to me was the best I've ever heard. Uh, Alan Snoddy was very good. Yeah, so he was. And uh, the story I tell you a story about Alan in a minute, but Alan was very good. And there was a few others were very good, but they said it. I know I'll, I'll carry on refereeing like right up until about 2016, 16, 17. I said, I'm coming near me end. You know what I mean? About a second, blue came in Temple Cup final. You know, after, after yeah. doing two camp Temple Cup finals away back at the start, I said, yeah. just come out of the blue. I said, maybe Billy's is Billy's well, thanking me. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> your farewell like, present. Yeah, I was quite happy to do it. Uh, she said, she, you're, you're my early reference. Yeah, I had quite a few finals. Done the lane in two Clarence Cup finals. Uh, yeah. The year rooftop won it. And they were only a junior team. Yeah. And they beat the drum and S at Solitude in the final. I, I was in the lane in this. And another lane, Kilmore against Down Patrick. That was intermediate level. I'd done two Cochran Curry finals. Uh, what other trophies do you just play for in that there? Yeah. At Scott, uh, the, uh, the two seconds to the Walter Muir Cup. I done one of them, and I said the two two Temple Cup finals in it. So that one were I wasn't too bad getting this Temple Cup final in two seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'd, I'd set my mind up then. I, I was going to call it a day very shortly. 
So 2018-19 season, I, I got in touch with you. The Amateur League, uh, Donna, Donna, Dal, uh, Donna Darlington. Donna Darlington. Darlington. Donna yes, Darlington. Yeah. Donna, Donna had taken over from Billy. Billy had, uh, hadn't been well for a while. And, but we swore with Billy. He was a gentleman. Yeah. You know, had him tortured. I was always on the phone to him. <laughs> that story I would have gone to tell you. As I said, I was a night shift at the time. Managed a night shift. I looked after the night shift in Shorts and Hall, Hallmark and Ours. Yeah. About 150 men you were looking after. You know, you'd obviously have supervisor, but I was looking after the whole lot. Every Friday night, sure thing, quarter to 12, half 11, quarter to 12, I'd have been up in the office phone rang. Hello, Billy. I'd have said it before you even said, you know, Jim, start. I want to change your match tomorrow, but you don't go, go, go. So don't, don't go there, go there, right? That's no problem, Billy. And that was say quarter to 12, quarter to two. Well, I have 150 men standing here. Where the hell is he? You know what I mean? I'm going to have to go. And you, you, you know the story, Billy, Billy yourself. Like, you know, <laughs> even when I was at home, even when I was, you know, I was working night shift, I was in the house on Friday night, the phone would rang half 10, 11 o'clock, my wife would have said, I'm away to bed. Aye, Billy's on the phone there. Billy's on the phone. I'll see, I'll see you in the morning, you know. That's what's Billy. But when Donna took over, I got in touch with Donna. I said, Donna, I'm going, Donna and Terry Pateman. Yeah. I'm going to call it a day. You know what I mean? This is my last season. I don't know why I was set up or was was by chance. The very last match as a junior referee was uh, at Killalay. Killalay Sagans and the Murray Young Men Sagans. Right. Uh, I don't know if I was deliberately done or what, because Killaday to me, I always loved Killaday. Loved refereeing down there, loved the crowd, loved the banter. Yeah. <laughs> some of it was friendly, some of it not friendly. <laughs> but you always, I, you know me, I, I give it back as much as they, they, they give Big it. Big time, me, yeah. You know? And uh, oh, that was my last match that clapped me on the pitch. Felt a wee bit, you know, it was a smashing match, Killaday won it, and they clapped me back off again. And then they presented me with a present at the, at the end of the match. Right. Uh, and I'll tell you what the present was. I couldn't keep it. I had to, I had to use it. It was eggs, uh, hard boiled eggs, and a couple of onions. <laughs> D, D Heron presented me, and I knew, like, right. I've known D even from his playing days. Yeah. D presented it to me in front of everybody. And he says, He opened it. And I opened it. It flips this, put it politely. He says, That's for you. But the story was in it. Every time I had to kill a lay, his way Falry made egg and onion sandwiches. And the best egg and onion sandwiches you could ever get. And that was my first <laughs> after the match. Handful of egg and onion. Even when I was going straight home, half an egg and onion fan. Got my feet in a way, but he's egg and onion. Oh, you went. <laughs> that was my that was my going away present from the from the Almager League. So it was, but as I said, but I said it then, I wasn't giving it up completely, but by the time taking arthritis bodily. Yeah. And, both hips running was getting more and more difficult. Uh, I was going to the hospital, being at a consultant for the last couple for the last couple of years. Then, yeah, and, uh, I was really sore, getting sore after matches. It's difficult to run. My wife kept saying, "You're mad, you know." Yeah, go and watch, go and watch a match. Well, I said to myself, "I could go and watch a match and criticize the referee." <laughs> yeah, a couple of boys who I say, I said to me, Jim, take a session. You've done the court. It's easy enough. I said, well, don't like Comet. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. As a referee, didn't like Comet. I was there at the start of it when they brought it into the amateur league. I, I never I never liked it because I felt it was very difficult to do. Because the, one of the first matches they done with Comet was uh, it was a 14 or 15 nil score. And you have to keep, keep the name of the score, or the number of the scores. The scores, came, right? yeah. To be honest, you end up. And every referee will tell you the same. Was that the 45th minute or was it the 48th minute? You know, that was Aye, 45th. Bad you know I mean? that, that's the way it, that's the way it went. So oh, I'm never the idea is good if you have uh, four officials. Yeah. Irish League standard where you have somebody watching everything and what's going on. You're doing it yourself and then you're trying to get who, who the sub is and you know what time he subbed at, who when the sub yeah. when was so and so booked. And then you have to sit down afterwards and do all that there before the match, as you know yourself, the teams have to be in. Yeah. Uh, at that time, it was only 10 minutes before kickoff when it started. And you had to put that transfer of that there for me on your phone, pull your book. Well, I cheated. Well, it wasn't called cheating. All I done was look at the numbers and yeah. get back on that later, at a later, you know, when I was doing a report. I just yeah. took the numbers 1, 2, 14, 15 and put it down. So if I booked a player, I didn't care about it yet. It was number 14 I booked. Yeah. I was doing a report. But then they come on the phone. 
got uh, number 14 is Joe Bloggs. And then you, uh, you tape, know. tape it in, you know. But it, it can be quite, quite difficult. I don't know what this, your sales are doing, like filling in too. At the start, maybe it was, maybe you've got in the way of it now. It's, it's quite easy. It's, so it it's made things a lot easier for registering players. Yeah, so it, has, it is that way, yeah. Yeah, at the, at the, for well, game days. Uh, uh, there's some referees. I can see. I can see now why referees do it. But some referees be coming in. It's a quarter past one. You're only getting in the change room. They're going. Be coming filled in. You're like, give me a chance. I haven't even got fourteen it's, it's, here it's yet. It's difficult for the next year sales because you know you're warming up. Player gets injured. You've yeah. a, you know you've already sat it in, and you can't change it at that stage. As far as I know, uh, what, what I can. The referee has it. to change it. Once, once you give it the ref, referee, then has that's an or problem. Yeah, Referee has exactly. to start to go back into it and change Joe, Blo- Joe Bloggs, change with Joe Brown, you know, yeah. and things like that there. But as I said, I take it further to the, uh, the end of the career, as I said, that was then. But I decided then I would uh, still carry on. Uh, so I'd still be able to run a wee bit. Uh, I, I never thought it was fair these were referees are going in on a pitch and still in the middle, yeah. the centre circle. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I never did that. Not a fan you know, of it. No, you did Oh, up, up where it was, you know what I mean? Not yeah. always you got it because you had somebody, somebody had an 80 yard pass, you weren't getting up with it. And that's, <laughs> that used to annoy me because, you know, you're down in the 18, 18 in the penalty area, and the keeper gets a ball and they hunt a good kick of a ball. He thumps it right up to the other end. And you hear players are going to the lane, keep up with play. Aye, right? Yeah, yeah. I know. There's no way. If I <laughs> None of your players distance, kept up with it. No, if you can't run that distance, you've been in the Olympics, you know. But anyway, uh, a fella called Bud, uh, what's Bud's second name? Chris Bud, that's his real name. Bud's the referee, looks after the referees in Ellisburn Junior League. Chris right. played for me at Hillsborough Boys, done goals for me years ago. And I got in touch with Chris. I said, Chris, would be interested. Once, once I fe- finish with a junior level of that level of football, would you, would you take me on? He, he said, certainly, no problem, you know, come. So I, w- I went there and uh, enjoyed it, brilliant. You know what I mean? Back to where, back where I started. started. Yeah. Because you know, I had a, done a couple of se- a seasons with the Lisburn Junior League while I was still referee and I used to do a couple in the morning. Maybe I'd yeah. a couple at the Murray Plainfields That's what, when I was still taking the junior junior level, even intermediate yeah. level. I used to always enjoy it. I said, no problem. Well, certainly. So I was with them up until this year. Yeah. Until this, all this COVID thing. Then I got a letter from the hospital. Uh, go, go and do a pre-op. Um, done the pre-op about at no, the, end, the end of November last year. I think I've mixed up the years now, you know. Uh, now last year, I'd done a pre-op for the operation because it was my left hip was really spotted. The right wasn't yeah. too bad. I can move about. And, and uh, I got the word to go for the pre-op. Done the pre-op. That was November, but didn't hear any more word. But in March, believe it or not, a couple of weeks before COVID, had, had us, or a week before it, I got a letter saying that my operation was set up to go on on the 23rd, I think it was the Mother's Day. Yeah. And to get ready, prepare for the operation on Monday. And I had, a, I got a, I had everything set up to do physio and all afterwards because I had a class and all. There's a class in a sport and leisure centre. Right. And I had it all set up. I go to it three nights a week when I had the operation done because I, I wanted to come back at least, yeah. you know, the kids, the kids level. And two days before the operation, I got the phone call. It's off. <laughs> well, I, well, well, I knew that. I knew it was going to happen, you know. Yeah. And I, I remember my, my very last match was uh, I can't even I can't remember the teams. It was a, a Lisburn Leisure Centre, and it was an under thirteen match or something. And I went in after the match, get couldn't get into the car. The old help was more or less gone. And I was looking around, is anybody watching me? Him and his referee's gear can't, can't walk. I had to just wiggle into the car, you know? So I knew it was them. That was the time. Like, uh, it was the time. But yeah. I said, the COVID came and the operation. I've been back. It was back two weeks ago. Done an hour pre-op. The, the consultant, the Musgrave, had rang me. The change consultant. He says, were you happy to go to him? The, the, the original con- consultant had up. Had an operation himself during the summer. He was able trans- to get an operation. Oh, oh he had no problem. But he had a kidney <laughs> transplant or something, yeah. something serious. Would I be happy to go along with him? I said, look, I don't care who I go with. You know, I only want this is this, this fixed, you know. Yeah. Just because of the COVID, we'll have to ask you happy enough to take the COVID test now. I said, no, no problem. You know what I mean? And 
as I said, I was to go and meet him a couple of weeks ago, uh, the 19th, and it was cancelled. It was second right. time. He said he's not doing any operations on it. But I still went ahead to the pre-op, the next part of it, on the same day. They done blood tests and ECG, see if you're all, you know, all, all, all up the spiel for, for an operation. Yeah. So I'm hoping, I, I have my doubts, but I'm still hoping down, down, down there somewhere it'll, it'll happen. And I will get back up. I promised all the boys that I know that I'll be back at 70, so, at 70 odd years of age, I hope. You know, I hope we're still a, a couple of seasons on the that level. Yeah. It, that, that, that was my referendum. A lot, lot, lot of things, you know, I could tell you about incidents that happen, you know. Yeah. Oh. It's crazy that it, when it comes to refereeing, uh, most players would always say, I wouldn't do it for love nor money, but you, you've done it for... Well, I don't know if they're close to 40 there, years there, and, and you enjoyed it as well. I love it, but there's a lot of referees, not an awful, not an awful lot, there's, maybe that's not fair, but there's quite a few in it, and that's what they're in it for. They're in it yeah. for money. They're right. doing two matches in the morning, two kids' matches, but they're, you know, they're lifting maybe £40 each match. Uh-huh. There's £80, and then they're doing an intermediate level, even even, even to a junior level. I mean, yeah. I don't know what, it, what it's £40. And, Plus 40 expenses. plus travel, yeah. Uh, and it's going to 45, let you know. <laughs> so it is. It's a 15 <laughs> pay mile. And I know, I know there's a cap on it because I, I could caught out with that one. And, but there's a cap on 55, I think it's 7, 55 and 75. Yeah. That's a cap on. They can't charge you any more than that. Plenty of boys would charge you more than that. Do you take an, an even, even, even at that level, 55 to an hour, you know, an hour of 80 pounds? There's over hundred pounds on Saturday. So some boys Dave's, are. Dave's wage, isn't it? A lot of Hillsborough boys <laughs> matches. I didn't charge anything because yeah. because they were about club of me, and the team that they played didn't get charged there. And I said no, forget about it. You know, and teams and sit. No, no, take it, take it. No, no, you're okay. I'm not. I'm not charging yeah. Hillsborough. I'm not charging you. And any friendlies they don't know that young men. You know, they always insisted it took some. Yeah. You know, or had a drink or the morning rack was the same. The morning rack would have, would have drop a bottle of a party over the, the door, you know, I was yeah. quite happy with that there, you know. Uh, no, there's boys in it from, I think, my own experience, I think it's too much. Yeah. You know, I think teams are paying far, far too much. The likes of yourselves, I don't know what the ground is now. It's, it's, it's just expensive for the ground. It's close to about yeah. 50 quid for a pitch. Uh, for a council uh, pitch. Paying, you're paying yeah. out for a pitch. People, teams are paying on the 3G or 4G or paying more, aren't they? Yeah, a lot more. Yeah, if they're paying that, you're paying your training. You know what I mean? Your boys are all still, some of them not even working. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's, 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 you're paying your fees. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, just hoping that the, the amateur league do what they said they were going to do and, and have no fees this season. I don't know yeah. if, it's, if it's still going to happen or not. But, you know, I, I still, senior referees, you know, I don't know what they are, 200 and something pound a match. Yeah. I mean, it's just not bad. <laughs> so it's not for ninety months so old. Some of the people she even gets terrible. Like, you know, I was I had done that a lot of lanes in the Irish League when you're on intermediate level. You're uh, an intermediate level when I was doing it. You get so many weeks allocation, say four weeks to the Irish League, four yeah. weeks to the Ballymena League. You didn't know who you were doing, but you had to the league you were allocated to all those weeks. So you had an idea. Uh, the Ballymena League, Billy McIlroy would have rang you on a Wednesday, you're going to such and such. If you're not doing it, if you don't turn up, there's no match. Yeah. They, they were very strict now. The, the, the intermediate league was a boy from Straban. Used to ring about them. I can't remember his name, but you know, you know the old one about the old man from Straban. Oh, uh, oh, 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 he was the play guy. I used to say, <laughs> yes, say that again, you know, stay slowly. Oh, 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 oh. Right? I got a wee gist of it. You know, I looked up the fixers and that's, that must be it there, you know. That's how yeah. I got it. Uh, so you got that. The Irish League, the Irish League, I. Like that, and it didn't like it. Most Irish league at that level, when you're at that level, there's already your senior referee, so he's going to referee a match. What yeah. you're on the line. Never no love of mine. I've done it over the years, you know. Yeah. Never enjoyed it. Always glad when the ninety minutes was up. Relief to get, you know, get it over because your mistakes stood out of mail, especially yeah. when you're doing them, you know, the big match. You know, you're putting the flag up one way and the referee's pointing the other way, and you're going. You know, just drop yeah. your flag in. Then they, the ones behind you, and especially Palace, they could have to know you, you know what I mean? And, you know, yeah. Get it. You're but, really close to the crowd, there, so you are in the lane. 
But the, the Irish League, the other good thing about it, I, I got to know the, the girls that done that, Angela and Sharon done the allocations at the time. They weren't allocated by, they were only approved by a senior man. Right. And uh, they just said, and I, I say, midweek, I fancy love for the Swiss and playing Torrance Sack. I said, eventually, yeah. You, you, you look, the chances are getting midweek ones, midweek ones of that, like other. But big matches, doing the line, I remember Clipville, Clipville, Glen Torn, all the claim men were down at my, I was at the do right, I know the outside rights for, for lines men. I was at the side of all the claim were down, down right around that bottom half. And I remember the ball went out, I was running backwards, oh, the flags. Next thing I, I must have hit something, but the next thing I knew, I was up there, right over. Right over, but a bird right in and, and stood up and I and bowed to the crowd and they all clapped. And they were so glad I got a match over with, you know, in the old chain. I just kind of the, the thunder and then cl- Clinton at the time, the change, you know, yeah. yeah. There was a couple of matches I got there. Experiences, I said, do you want to listen to a couple of experiences? I definitely do, uh, yeah. <laughs> one, one, one of the ones I do remember was a, a, a junior match, Calvin O boys were playing a Castle Ray team in the amateur league. At uh, Henry Jones up at yeah. Castle Ray, up, up way up the hill. Always windy. Always windy. Wasn't a bad pitch. It was the one I just yeah. outside the changing room. The match was going on anyway. It was a ding dong battle. So it was, a, it was no quarter given. And the, uh, there was a wee man on the line, dress, suit, tie, overcoat, but he was shouting. Oh, referee, no awfully awful he was, you know. That is terrible. That is an awful decision. That's shocking. This has gone on and on and on. But about 10 minutes to go, I, I, that's enough. I have to say, excuse me, sir. Are you with this team? He says, I'm with Kelvin. I said, well, you just shut your mouth. <laughs> miss out, to miss out the bleep. Uh, and are you talking to me? I said, yes, I'm talking to you. you. Shut up. I don't want to hear any more. 10 minutes of match to go. And I don't want to hear any more. I was all right. Finished the match, walking into the change room, one of the boys at Calvin. Came up to me, a fella called Dean, Dean Irwin, played for I knew Dean from work. He says, mate, do you know who I was you were talking to? I'm a clue. He says, I'm Egypt. He says, that's, that's David Bowen, president of the Irish Football Association. <laughs> you know, and I said, oh, well, one of those things. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> shouldn't be shouting. So, you know, I said, maybe, that's one of the things that I regret it. I shouldn't have cursed. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? At the same time, so I got no. Funny enough, for two seasons I didn't get a junior cup match. There you go ahead. <laughs> I was one of those. That was one of the instances. Uh, Nor let's let's just say, I'll tell you a good one. I don't know if you can let me do this in this one. I was doing ladies matches. I forgot to tell you, I used to do ladies matches in the summer as well. Right. And the ice, the ice football system was starting up. The ladies matches used to get sent ever anywhere. Ralph Raymond, seven o'clock kickoff. It was getting dark by the time it was finished. Yeah. Ladies, they weren't ladies, most of them. No, I'm not being distracted, but most of them would have kicked, kicked you, you know? Yeah. One, one match in Armagh, and I can't even remember the teams, it was an Armagh ladies team against somebody anyway. And this girl, built like this here, was kicking everything and anything that moved. You know, the ball went past the girl around, she just, well, up she went. <laughs> like Fenty, like, you know, <laughs> so she was. I had to get his name in somewhere. Uh, and he kept you know, kicking them every time. So I ended up, I booked her. What are you booking me for? And our language was atrocious. I said, you, yeah. you can't kick people like that. I do that every week. I said, you can't do that. So the match, second half, I thought, she done it again. Wang, we grab him. 10 feet up in the air. So off you go. Off I'm you not go. Letting go off, she says. I said, just go off, please. And I just blow the match up and I'll go home. But she went off anyway, with luck. So finished the match. Then the changing room, because I'm having a shower. My, my changing room at the at, at RMA, it's a good size, but there was no curtain, there's no curtain on the shower. On the shower, yeah. Going away. You know, door wraps me. I, I didn't think of the time. I thought it was somebody coming come to pay me. I said, come on in. I turn around, it's your woman. And she says, there's your money, you effing ref. And she said, she looked at me like, I kept, I was standing here, you know, modestly standing, you know. <laughs> couldn't even get turned around. She says, you're not much of an effing man either. The way she went. <laughs> she went though. She came out of the end of that remark, you know. <laughs> but my last probably experience would be, I have a few more, like, but the last one I really do remember was a referee in the Parliament of Elders. Against uh, 
a paper in Korea and I can't remember who it was. Korea and Northwest, sorry, anyway. At, at, uh, where Welders play. Yeah. They were the ground just when I'd made it. The, uh, well, anyway, I arrived to the ground plenty of time. Fred McGee, who, as I said, was a big man in the IFA for years there, and especially for the welders. Yeah. Fred always greeted you to the ground, took you in, got you a sandwich if you wanted a sandwich, a cup of tea before lunch. It's just a, just a ritual that he got. He said to me, Jim, what's, what's going on? He said, what, what do you mean, what's going on, Fred? He says, Malcolm Wright's here, who was head of IFA, refereeing at the time. Malcolm refereed in the World Cup years and years and years away, well, long before maybe we were put, but he refereed, I think it was 1958 or something, Malcolm refereed in at the World Cup, but he says, Malcolm Wright's here, and he's six people with him, and they're all standing out there, he says, they're having, having tea and coffee. I don't know if that's what it is. So I had them, but she was getting she was door wrap. Yeah, he says, yes, I says, it's Malcolm. I says, come on in, Malcolm, you know. I had about Malcolm a few times through his, through his assessment. He said, I'm the same. He says, everything all right? I says, I, I says, I said, everything all right for you? I says, are you assess me today? Because the assessors at that state didn't come and greet you before the match. They actually yeah. hid. They used to hide. I don't right. know if you remember the old post office ground to Murray Richardson Park, the trees yeah. up in the top. I remember being assessed there and Jack Adair hiding in the trees. And I could see him. <laughs> you know, but anyway, I says, you assess today? He says, no. He says, I want to put your mind at rest. He says, I've six assessors with me. He says, and there'll be dotted around the pitch. Two at each thing and one at each, one at each end. And they're all assessing you. I mean, what? He says, they're all assessing you. But don't worry, he says, they are being assessed on their assessments. Right. He says, they are going to put the reports in. We're going to put the six them together and see, you know, where one, one, what one sees and what one doesn't see. Yeah. To try to correct assessments so they're all signaled the same hymn sheet sort of thing. Yeah. You know, and that, that was an experience I never forget. You know, I could see them all the time because you had to start out of May, you know, and you get the note, some of them already knew, you know. So that was one of more one of the more pleasant experiences, you know. Yeah. One of the angle on and an angle on were in the amateur league. Yeah. Jackie Burroughs was their manager. Cliff said Burroughs relation of his playing for Glen Thorne got the goal yeah. of the year one time at Clever Crusaders sorry sorry said Clever Crusaders said actually runs a junior team now in the uh Lisburn Junior League Jackie was our manager I, I I was working that morning Saturday morning this was one of the first big what I call big matches I arrived, I arrived at Angelon's ground and that where it was in Antrim at the factory yeah and kick, a lot, kick off was two o'clock it was only about 25 past half 12 I went straight I was working that morning I arrived the ground, stuck at the ground. Well, I qualify, so that ground's not playable. I said, it's terrible, terrible. He says, what do you think? I said, I'm going to call it off. I said, but I'm going to have to wait until the team's arriving. He said, what about the top pitch? And I don't know if you ever played an ankle on ground. There was a pitch away at the top, and there was a big, big pitch outside the change room. I remember big, big. a long, long time ago. Like, yeah. yeah, it was a long time ago, but it was another pitch at the top. He says, what about the tip pitch at the top? He says, well, we'll have a look at it. He says, it's playable, all right. I said, the only thing is the markings is shit, <laughs> to be truthful. Yeah. He says, um, there's no net up yet, either net or not. He says, if we got it marked, put the nets up, what do you think? I said, well, I'm not, I won't even inspect, I have to inspect it again. I says, I'm happy with the playing surface. I said, but yeah. if the pitch is marked, I says, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me change in the boots and I'll give us a hand. Well, I work with him for, from the half one to near half two, helping to mark a pitch out. Put the nets up. <laughs> I remember I got the ladder, turn the nets up. I'm back in the change. I said, the match is on. He had went and told the two teams the match was on. I'm back in the change room. There's this boy who's sitting the referee's gear on. And I'll not tell you his name, but he was a se senior referee and his dad said he was a senior assessor. And he says, uh, what are you doing? He says, I'm refereeing this match. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm refereeing it. I said, he says, no, 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 no. I says, I, I've, uh, I'm more senior than you. You're only intermediate and I'm a senior after. I said, I don't give a who you are or what you are. I yeah. said, yeah, I think I spent an hour marking a pitch up with the team, putting their nets up for you to come in. And, and to, I said, by the way, that's, it's half one. I was, I was here at half 12, it's half one. You haven't even inspected the pitch yet. 
Oh, I did. I said, no, you didn't. I said, good cooking. I said, I was on the pitch, the, ha the yeah. half one. Come to the market out. I said, if you, you'd have come up, I'd have saw you. I said, you've only arrived. I said, no way you're doing a match. I said, I'll see if you decide to do it. I'm going out to you in the middle, and I'll referee it alongside you. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, first name was Bram. Bram says, hey, then, he's not giving in, I'll go. And he uh. went. You know, away he went. And I had a terrible match. I remember going home in the car and said, "Who's the hell out of Adam that do the match? It was one of my big mistakes. <laughs> one of my biggest mistakes. The whole way home, what did I do there? I could have let him do that, you know. Just one of the matches. Every, every yeah. Day. So that's that's some of the experience I had, you know, over the years. Always enjoyed it. Always love it. I do. I do miss the level of the likes of yourselves. Always enjoyed the refereeing yourselves. Yeah. Love, 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 love refereeing forward. Maybe it's one of the ones that I've done regular. A few characters on your team at the time, you know. Vente, of course, and more yellow cards with Vente. And not very bad. Mano as well. Yeah, but plenty of uh, Daggy. Yeah. Mr. Byrne. He, yeah, he gave, gave you a break. I remember him from, from the Crumlin days, yeah. and he played at Crumlin, you know, Daggy. Uh, Gerald Wilson. Yes. Gerald will tell you I never booked him. You know, I mean, Gerald's a liar. Just, you get, I, I hope he hears that. He is a liar. I'll tell him this. <laughs> <laughs> but they're characters I done your I done your very first matches ever played. So I did if you remember, uh, it was against. I think it was on alone. It was the very yeah. first match he's ever played in Tunbrook. So it was, and uh, somebody got hurt in it. I remember one of your players got hurt. Went to the hospital. Cut himself. Who was it? Uh, oh, I was Kipper. 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 Yeah, Kipper. Kipper. Yes, Kipper. Can you yeah. remember the name? Sorry. Kipper got badly cut. Yeah. He was cut. And uh, well, anyway, I remember, but that was that was the only uh, court case he ever had. So it was. Right. Kipper, Kipper was claiming with the council yeah. at the time. And it was nerve wracking for myself because, you know, you get, you get the ladder here, someone to go to this Lisburn court. It was. I knew Kipper and all well. <laughs> I don't want to bother, but I knew he was claiming against the council. It wasn't, it wasn't against me. But unfortunately, yeah. in our case, as referees, Become responsible. The council can write their hands off it. You refereed the match, but right. I remember it was a woman judge, and I remember saying to me, uh, "What did you do before the match?" I said, "Well, I, I to be honest, I had inspected the pitch the day before because I'd never been to the pitch up there, never been yeah. there, and I went up. I was living in the morning. I was able to just step up, took a walk over, and it was brilliant. Pitch, pitch was yeah. marvelous. I said, I looked at the pitch. I said, it wasn't the, the official pitch inspection." But the pitch was was perfect at that time. Uh, half an hour before the match started, I inspected the pitch, and I had to explain to her. What, 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 I remember the barrister or whatever they are from the, for the Lisburn Council said to me, "Ask me how do you inspect the pitch? What's the method?" Well, I told him about going up one diagonal, up another diagonal, going across, and he said, "She said, I remember the judge said to me, did you would, would you have noticed a glass or something? What was it? I think he was saying." I said, look, I said, it could be glass there. I said, but you're inspecting the pitch. You're only going to, what? You can't, I said, you can't inspect every blade of glass. Because I was hoping the yeah. keeper would win this case. Yeah. I shouldn't say that. Right? But you know <laughs> what I mean? But I, I was only there as a referee, not defending anybody. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was just saying, I can't, I, there's no way I can inspect every blade of glass. I can look, you know, and do it, do that inspection. But, you know, you're not, you're not going to get there over the glass. But he lost his case, I remember. Yeah. She, she, I think it was because I had done, I looked at the pitch a couple of times. You know what I mean? Right. And it, it, pro it probably it would, uh, it would teach a lot of young referees coming through that is the most important thing you can do a pitch yeah. inspection and a player's inspection. Yeah. You see players, players, players will put a claim up and you're, you, you, become, you become responsible for it. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like when, a, when a referee turns up the pits and, and they call the game off because there's water on the pits and stuff. It's it's frustrating for both teams who just want to play, but people have to remember it is it is a safety issue. Well, he, he's responsible. He, he becomes responsible for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you, the referee, said it was playable, and that's that. The council will come out. Council will say that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know you have uh, some councils will leave it leave it up to the referee. Very few. You know what I mean? So someone said, I believe we'll leave it to referee to call off. Intermediate yeah. level's different. I, I, I still, even up, even up, hopefully this season never starts. If it does start in November, 
I would still do pitch inspections for the right. young men. I yeah. would do it for Gary Alke, and an odd one for Lisburn Rangers and the Murray Rack. I would do them on the Saturday morning. And yeah. if, it, if it's a cup match, it likes a 2A down, it, it, the council can call it off. Yeah. But if it's a cup match, say, I don't want last year for Finnegan. I don't know who they're playing, but it was a cup match I went there. Waterburn. The Pigeons at um, Waterburn, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the council left it to the teams. And I remember, I remember trying to be coaxed to try to play the match. Yeah. You know, it's not wrong with Jim. You know, I said, I'm going to tell you, there's no way that you can play, can play that match. I said, you can leave it to the referee comes. I said, the referee's going to call it off and he's going to charge you half a match fee plus his travel. Is, 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 is it worth yeah. a, a lot of pound? And then I can call it off now. I can phone, I can phone the AFN and say, my, 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 who, 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 yeah. I, they know when I do them, you know. And I, yeah. I says, I, I, it's not playable. And I remember them getting the ball, throwing it up. I know where Finnegan play at Butterborn there. You know where they yeah. play just outside the changing rooms. And I threw the ball up. Like, it disappeared. Put that much of <laughs> ball sitting on top of the water. I mean, Chris, catch your cell phone. The match is off, you know. <laughs> and, oh, it's not happy enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. You do, you do get teams, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, you get teams come in and say, Do you need this match off? Call it off. And you, know, uh, the <laughs> you know, the opposite, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe three or four players injured or somebody suspended or something like that. But I, I'm sorry, it's my decision. You know, I'll, I'll make a decision. If I feel it's playable, it's playable. Yeah. Okay. I'll say no. You know what I mean? And, it, and it's, it's hard for teams who on the Saturday have paid, paid money and all that, you know what I mean? It's, and that's what bad the likes of the council will call them off. Yeah. Sometimes the council call them off too soon. Like I, I've, I've seen the money play. I've seen your own pitch. And yeah. I, I think I put a remark on it last year on Facebook. Yeah. But one of your, your match had been called off. And I was, I was on. I had to go down to see the young men play. Yeah. Because I'd, I'd seen their pitch in the morning. Their pitch was brilliant. And I took a wee walk up through the back of the young men's pitch. Because I, 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 I don't live too far away from there, you see. Yeah. I'd walk down. I walked on your pitch. Yeah, no way this match is off today. But there was no nets up. The kids' match has been called off already. Yeah. And some of the council boys just can be bored. Uh, I then, think a council one's now. It seems to be like it, it's it seems to have changed last year where it's just just a blanket, like you no, know, they're all off. Oh, uh, like they call them all off. Like Fuller, you know, Fuller, it, it holds it holds water better than any pitch, any council pitch. Anyway. I seen Fuller, I seen us playing on. When I, when I was playing, like, and as I said, I'm going back, but it's, it had never really changed. Like, change rooms had never changed. It's yeah. exactly the same. Everything's the same. I saw on Saturday morning water on the foot. You could, you could, you know, it was like a swimming pool. You see, it at 12 o'clock, maybe an hour, an hour and a it's half, no rain. Perfect. You know, you want to play in this. The far pitch was always dodgy, yeah. especially the far, the far corner. And, but I don't know if you ever noticed the far corner is a bank, a big bank. Yeah. There's like a a hole through the middle of it. That's a drain. Yeah. They dug a drain on that. They drain it away down and towards the towards the river. And the very yeah. old men's pitch. Nine times out of ten, that's playable. Yeah. Even even though it's a wee bit probably a bit heavier. So I think pitch. sometimes sometimes it gets the water flowing down for it and so it does. It goes down the bank down towards the bottom. It. It's not bad, but it, 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 there's, one, there's one part of the Murray one's pitch and they, they fixed it last year. Right. They dug yeah. they put their own drains in. So they yeah. did and the uh they're, they're finding it hard to do at the minute too, you know, to keep going. You know, it's yeah. like yourselves, you know. It's, it's difficult for a lot of teams, you know what I mean? And people are saying they need to like start it. I, I have, I have two, I'm in two minds in that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I listen to people down this year. Life's more important than a football match. Yeah. You know, a lot a lot more important, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's, fun, it's, it's a hard yeah. one. It's a hard one. If the thing is, if, if we're gonna be able, if we're gonna be allowed to play football, which we have been, it may as well be competitive. That's the way I see it, really, yeah. because it, it makes it, well, it makes it more enjoyable. It's always going to be competitive. You can't, you can't play. You know, these rules that brought out for to play on friendly matches for referees. You're, yeah. you're not allowed to give your court. You're not allowed to give your touchline flags. I, I don't know if you've noticed that. The referee. Yeah. Some are, and some aren't, but yeah, not you're supposed not supposed to, to apparently. Yeah. Not supposed to spit. Players aren't supposed well, I'm, I'm against spitting anyway. I know and I've, I've done it myself. But you're not supposed to spit. Mm. You can actually book a player for spitting. 
you know, a yeah. player on, on a referee, you're not referee, you're not supposed to, you're not allowed to go, you're, you have to go changed, all right? Yeah. Happen, but you're not allowed to change the changing room. You know, I, I went to see a friendly or Demory Rack against Finnegan. And it was an awful Saturday, it was a bad Saturday. In fact, I wasn't even going to go over and I said, I don't walk over, young man's batch of off. I walked over. I felt sorry for those fellas changing. I was like the old days, like my old days. Yeah. Playing. I mean, there was no such thing as fancy changing room in those days. You change the side of the pitch, wash your legs, and then we revert run down the side. <laughs> so you did. But, uh, you know, I felt sorry. I feel, feel more sorry for kids, even. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kids need to get in and get changed. I know, I know a lot of them just jump in the dad's car and away they go. Yeah. I mean, they're quite happy with that there. But I think kids need to get changed and looked after better, you know. But the, kids, the kids these days are probably a better looked after kid ways now. Yeah, it's it's for us for us as coaches the hardest thing is the the fact that your team's going to change a lot, and you can't say in players mm-hmm. run with kits because they especially in an amateur league one week a player is available. No, it's, it's, it's so I they, they, you're chasing them to get a kid off them. <laughs> so you are. Yeah, I well you, you know if you're going off a pitch, especially if you're wet, you just want to get into the car and go away. You know you yeah. don't want to start taking shorts off and sacks off. They're standing at the side of a car in a cold. We haven't met the cold period yet. It's, you know, it's when we do, yeah, which is happening. It's coming. Like I remember in my, my early days uh, playing uh, quite, quite a few. I remember playing an old boys team up, up at Dundrod, a junior cup or junior shield match. I remember I, I was doing goals, you say, with the Murray men. I remember we were winning about 9 0 at the time. Yeah. And uh, there was cows, cows done off the pitch. Parts, no clearing it off, just stayed there, like you know, playing away. Yeah, and somebody had a shot near the end, and I remember it. And I'm, I'm not going to let them score. And I took a big fancy, you know, one for the one for the camera, Dave's. I caught it and see on the way down. That's <laughs> like slow motion. I could see this, and <laughs> in the eyebrows, and, the, and there was no showers. I remember getting getting in the cars, driving down to the Murray playing fields, and, and got in before they were locked up. It was a cold shower. I had. But it, you didn't worry. You didn't worry those days. Death players are pumper now. New kid every <laughs> three weeks. You know, that's that's kids are the same. When I was Hillsborough yeah. boys even back a few years back there. It's the same. Jim, when am I getting a new kit? You only got that three weeks ago. Uh, I'm gonna need a new one. You know. Whereas a, a kit lasted about ten years. It was passed yeah, down for every yeah. age group, so it was. They all team. The boy old men. We played in the same kit for about three years. I bought yeah. my own. I, I always like something, something different from the rest of them, you know what I mean? The, the old goalkeeper's jersey were like poor like things, you know what I mean? They like something yeah. different. Came on a referee in. I, I, I remember the, you know that light blue jersey that I on after? I got one yeah. of the first ones here. I got it up Bobby Stewart Sports Shop in the Castle Ray Road. I went over one right. day to get boots. He said to me, Jim, what do you think of that jersey there? We sell us it. I'll pop a hat off you, you know what I mean? <laughs> and stuff. I was, and I wore, the first match I wore it was a standard telephone cables. Right. Standard. And I remember wearing it. I got, got a badge and all sewn on it. You know, working great. I worked embroidered. So the badge was sewn on. My wife sewed the badge on. It felt great, you know. But I was always like that. I liked something, yeah. something different. Something different. Ah, it was a great a conversation. This. Jim, I, I really appreciate you giving up your time. I've really enjoyed it. It's yeah. it's something completely different for me to, um, because I I've known you for a long time. But being a kid watching in the sidelines when you were refereeing a forward and then growing up and then now being a coach and stuff and yeah. um, you, you don't realise you always tell you always, always tell them I played I did play yeah well, well, tried the reason why the reason why so many of our players have a good rapport and always because we always enjoyed the games refereed which is it's that's the biggest compliment you can give a referee really where you come up off a pitch you can, few, you can tell there them there are a few teams that you do you do have run-ins and you know that's there you, you can do nothing about it you know yeah uh, and you know, you go to a referee and the next thing you hear is, oh, that's him again. I love to hear that. I used to love hearing that, you know. You know, the gym, you hear something, oh, that's him again. It's that big bleep again, you know what I mean? I think, yeah. You're not getting much a day. Now that I've done that, like, you know, my 50-50, that's, that's a yeah. different story. That's, you know what I mean? But, uh, but most teams I get on well with, most players, you know, top teams and things like that, there are. My, my, my ever top team at, at any level, and inter, especially at their major level, would have been in their yeah. heyday, you know what I mean? Top, top player, uh, Philip Jennings, Philip Jennings, 
hip, as he was known on it. To yeah. me, he could have played in England with no problem. Great, great, great player. He had a couple of players played for him. Murph, Colin Murray. If he played full back for him, I hope, hope he hears us. He'll he buy me a drink the next time. <laughs> and his, bro, his, his brother, Mark, Jeff, right. Killalay to me, but we're a great team. And Mike Elada, yeah, we're an great nice football team coming through. Story on Mike Elada was, I don't know Mike Elada in the Junior Cup. I think they were, were they in the Belfast District League? Yeah, but they won the Junior Cup the first time. I think yeah. they were still in that. They hadn't, they hadn't, hadn't been in the, yeah, they didn't have, weren't in the Almond Street, but I got them on a Junior Cup match at Lurgan against some old boys team in Lurgan. And the match was playing at Tannock Moor Gardens. As you, yeah. Just you come up through the motorway, Craig Allen there, and Tannock Moor Gardens is a, like a zoo for kids to go to, but there's two pitches on it. So I got them. I didn't know who Immaculata was or anything at the time. But I was thinking a fantastic football team. But they were winning 16, 15, 16 mil. It was about 10, 15 minutes to go. And the wee manager of the other team said to me, referee, blow it up. And he said, look, look, I'll give it a couple of minutes so we're over the official time. It was 68 minutes or something that time. Yeah. So in case if somebody says something, you know what I mean? You never know, it can bounce back on you. So I played in our couple of minutes. Putting a Mac, a Mac scored in our two goals. It was about 18 mil. So I mean, that's it. Next thing is Carrie everyone across the pitch. Referee, referee, Kevin Miller. He said, No 10 minutes yet. And I didn't know, but the time got to know better, obviously, as he went in the amateur league. I mean, no, no, my watch is 45. He says all over. So we're walking and he was still going on about it. <clears throat> and one of their one of our players came on and said, we, you know why? He says, we have a bet on who scores the most goals in the season. And he sought one of the players back to score. And he says, he had a score in our couple before the end. I said, I said, 45 minutes was up. I didn't even know. I don't want to play it short. Uh-huh. 45 minutes were up. So he, he, I don't think he ever forgave me for that. But that, that day, I went back to get into the car. And I couldn't get into the car. There was a, a, bridal, a bridal car sitting right in front of my car. And I couldn't get out. And Another one behind it, and there's a fellow in the corner. Up, I says, he was a pot like a, pa- a passenger. And I says, uh, where's the driver? He says, oh, he's away, he's away with the bridal party. And he says, they're away getting their photographs taken in the gardens, talent more gardens, nice garden. Yeah, he says, you'll have to, I'll have to wait till he comes back. I said, oh, there's no way I could get out, even no edge out, no, I was yeah. stuck. So Calvin can pass on the way out, he's at the car stop, you big bee shit. <laughs> I, I, said, I remember you, you know what I mean? So they drove home. So I, half an hour before the bridal party came back, I got in the car and the mom apologized. I said, I've got something wrong with the car, you know, do nothing about it. And it was a lot, nice day, it was a nice dry day. And I, was, I jumped in the car and was saying, I've got to knock the bridal car over and I'm on the big bottle of champagne. And a couple of bottles on the bridal car. And I said, Happy oh, days. Well, worth a worth it was worth the wait. <laughs> Oh, that was my run in the first run in with a Mac, but they're, they're a great football team. Yeah, don't worry. It's nice and safe. Team, teams that didn't like refereeing, I probably shouldn't say it, but there are there are a couple. I didn't enjoy, I didn't enjoy going in. You know? One in particular, yeah. I'm not going to mention their name, but one in particular had a couple, a couple of seasons ago uh, with their spectators. I bonded the match, and it was only the only second match I ever bonded in my life, right. 35 years. It went before the, the AFA, the county had them. They were fined, they appealed it, and won their appeal. And see, sitting before that appeals committee that night, I felt like it, it was me that done it all wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was guilty of what yeah. happened. The questions were asked me were unbelievable. You know, these two people that were supposed to threaten you, why? How do you know they were, were from that team? I mean, it was dead easy. They had tracksuit tops of the, or these tops on with the team's name on. I assumed they were, but you can't assume that. And there was a brief bit of a fight at half time as the two teams. It was, Two teams were going into the change room. There was a bit of a scuffle. Yeah. And uh, I stood back at the half, you know, before you went up in the not, As I said, I'm not saying it is. People will know. And I stood back and watched it. And they, they sorted themselves out. And that came up with the appeal too. And one of, one of the committee men said to me, why did you not stop that? I says, excuse me. I says, I, I can't leave the pitch. Every player's left the pitch. That's my instructions. And I says, but when the last player left the pitch, and it sorted itself out. He yeah. says, well, you were wrong. You should have been up. You should have been up in the middle of it. And he says, sorry. And he fights. Nine times out of ten. And I know what a fight's like. I know when to stand back and have them get on with it. Yeah. Then sort of it. Yeah. To, well, just watch what goes on. Because you get in the middle of it, you get a dig in the gut. Exactly. You, know, you, you should. And that, I felt, when I left that meet, Danny, I said, this team's going to win this. 
appeal and they did win it. But I would I never heard a result of it. Nothing ever came to me. Yeah. So there wasn't one of the teams was willing to back me up. The 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 team, the away team, they were quite willing to back me up because they had sent me a message, an email in the morning of the appeal it, you know, with everything that they saw what happened. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to show that. I right. wasn't allowed to show that. I mean, I'll have them in person. I didn't know. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. I had a representative from the referees committee at that. And he said to me, he said, you can't use that letter. I said, I had an email. I said, why? Well, I said, that's only, pre- that's only backing me up. What happened? You can't use it. But they had to be here in person. Yeah, well, that was a good start, you know. Uh, yeah. I never even heard the result of it. The only reason I know they have won their appeal, the match was replayed. Oh, that's it. Yeah. The, the, the one they were paid. That was that was one of the teams. I used to enjoy going to the see that that happened. That was it. No, yeah. That was a sickler. But really, all the other team. You know me. I have thick skin. I, you know, for players. Most players said to me, "F, F you." I'd say, "I F you too." You know, no. I mean, that's good. <laughs> yeah. a couple of great one-liners over the years, anyway. I well, I, 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 one of the ones you probably can't say. You know. <laughs> you know, the, F, the FU business, not if I, not if I was studded, none of your ass was studded with diamonds and like all the details. <laughs> that, you know? That's one but, of my favourite ones. <laughs> uh, that's why I use that a lot, a lot, a lot of times. You know what I mean? Or the other, another one would have been a, you know, uh, somebody had said something, and I was talking to player, like, say like Lex of Fenty, helping them, you know, how many yards yeah. of them. If you again, I'm going to have to book for God's sake. You know, some, 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 some of the other team would have said, Oh, I talked to him when he got there. I have to talk to talk my brother some way. And then I used to get up people's backs or my or that's my cousin or that's my nephew. You have to speak to him some way, you know what I mean? You have to speak yeah. to him every night and just walk on and you could see the ah, the shit of the thing. He that's his brother playing there, you know. He's rather him. <laughs> Things like that. Make, yeah. make it more enjoyable, you know. I have to make life enjoyable. Bit of a wind up as well, I'll get you guys through a day. Uh, I'd be I'd glad be to hear you'll be back as well. And fair play to you, Jim. You're well, I'm still doing it after all these years. What, what, what level the uh, maybe going to kids' small set of games, you know, some half yeah. pitch, no running to do. Yet you get abuse of that too. Uh, <laughs> you probably get more abuse of the kids' games. Yeah. You always did it. That was the only other match I've ever uh, abandoned. It was a kids' game, under 15 game, under 16, under 15. This burn, the first time I was with the Spurn League. It was yeah. uh, Oxford Sunnyside against uh, Lower Shankle. No, it's a shankle team. It's a shankle team anyway, and that's what Sonny said. And well, Ben and were both from, there was no love. And I was more before a match, there was no love between them. But first half, no problem. Nothing happening. And then I looked over at half time and everybody was in it, fighting. Full scale punch up, they're all. And the, the fellow that actually, the chairman, the, the I don't know if I've actually turned on, but Stanley Shepard of the Lisburn Youth League. Stanley was there. I was actually talking to him the same. Hey, Stanley, I'm not going to hear that. <laughs> you get a day, a whole lot of two teams, spectators in the middle, banging away. I, I never even heard what started it. But uh, so uh, let us settle about two managers, much abandon. Stanley, much is abandon. I put a report in for him to get changed. Yeah. Then the change room, getting changed. So we're up, two managers. Come out of the word with you. I says, no problem. Uh, you report that. I says, look, I says, like, <laughs> choice to report it. I says, head man of the lake standing talking. I says, what do you want me to do? I says, what well, you wouldn't do as a favor. I says, what, what is it? He says, you wouldn't start the match again. I says, sure, you Close the door behind you. Uh, that was the only other match I ever bonded. Yeah. I mean, as a kid in the match. So it happens, it happens, you know. Yeah, exactly, but two oh, matches over a long period of time is not bad. It's still it's good going. No, the some referees have two a season. One other one was probably close. Was a team called Desert Martin it was in the uh, Balamino Intermediate League. Yeah. Went there. That's that's all these tips used to get in all these leagues. You know, yeah, way Strabon and a skill Korean. Uh, but it was at that one, Desert Martin, and we won the line that much too. And he was shouting and yelling, shouting. But the match was okay, no problem. <laughs> this fella then near the end, this fella. He looked offside, but he wasn't offside as far as I was concerned. Where he went, scored the goal. Next thing I, I felt a hand on my shoulder, my back. I, mean, who the f- I turned it was the wee man, and he fist back. I said, if you hit me, I'd put you in the next break. And the <laughs> players grabbed him. 
I said, forget about the film, that's what they're over. So, practically, over. if I had been earlier, that was it. That'd be it. But, uh, finished the match, took about two minutes later, down in the change room, Desert Mountain. And she came in, he says to me, you're recording that. I says, well, all of them will be recording the spectator come on the field. I mean, I said, but you've, he was never so close to getting that day in a goal. You know, that, I always say to myself, that's one of my biggest regrets. See, that the yeah. incident I was telling you about, see the two boys approached me. I should yeah. have floored them. <laughs> but I should have. Well, you know, I'd say if it was my, uh, right now, the way I am now, and I, yeah. I would, you know, yeah. I'll take a consequences for it. I worry about it after. You know, I mean, it didn't scare me. It yeah. didn't frighten me, you know. I'm not, I'm, I'm, easy, I'm not easy frightened, you know. It didn't scare me. It's just the way it was done. Yeah, you know, and the manager of that other of the, of the team, the home team, came in to come in to see me at half time, and after I had thrown the match with a plan, he said to me, "Would you come out here, Jim, and identify the two people in the crowd? The crowd were still, you know, saying I really said it where it is, but the crowd were still milling about." Yeah, and uh, I says, "No way!" And my, I, I mean, you want me to go out there and say it's you and you? I says, "No way!" I said, "What are you going to do about it if I do go out and say it's you and you?" Well, he yeah. says, "We we'll be banning them from the club." I says, I, that was just done. Yeah. But uh, as I said, thick skin, it does bar. Help it be. <laughs> definitely do to be <laughs> a referee. Imagine when, you, when you're a referee forward against Suffolk or something like that. <laughs> I know, you take some abuse no matter what. Uh, I see, Fenty, Fenty was probably the worst and the best. I like Fenty, you know yeah. what I mean? I always, I always get on them. Fenty very well. But Fenty was probably, I went on the worst about it, so we did. Yeah, uh, Daggy, was another one. My, 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 all the time. But they were good days, and I'm, not, I'm thankful I got through them all. Yeah, I was thankful for the sales of the referee likes your sales and a few other, a few other good teams on. Uh-huh. Yeah, Jim, thanks very much for for uh, the interview. I really enjoyed it. You can add it out there probably down to five minutes. <laughs> no, we'll keep it the way it is because it's it is really enjoyable. I want to keep it the way it is, and and um, I look forward to, to, to hearing it back. Yeah, uh, you've, you've met a lot of good people throughout your career as well. And then mm-hmm. a lot of um, I got met a lot of good people, people. Made a lot of good, made a lot of good friends, and enjoyed the, enjoyed the playing side. That's yeah. That's I used to say I was a regret, but I took Rafferty and all. Mm-hmm. Thirty, what's been thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven. That's given me age away. You know what I mean? Thirty five yeah. years out of it. Yeah, I used to say at the start. Say at 40, you come off FIFA list, you see, if you're on FIFA, the next day yeah. I'll snorry. I tell you, I could go on all night about all the story and stories and things like that, but the, um, I used to say I was a grad that didn't take it up earlier. Yeah. You know, in my 20s, you get young fellas at 20. But then at the, I look at the other side of it. Yeah, you're, you're playing you know I mean? yeah. you know, Not many people can say that and, and, play, and play it at a good level. Yeah. Even as I said, even after go back to White's when I was in the thirties, you know, yeah. So I really enjoyed it. Back to White's is a good player. Fifteen as an outfield player, and back at thirties, I a good keeper. You know, thank you, right? Oh, uh, lots, lots, lots of good friends and uh, a few enemies, uh, but I still shake hands with them, you know. Yeah. And that's football. Really. That's football. You know what I mean? Yeah. As I said, I, I don't care. See, see, physical. I love physical stuff. Maybe I was yeah. brought up the old standard, you know, the old, the old, the old style of football. You know what I mean? The, the lower shankles of, of the old. You know yeah. I mean? where, where the referee turned his back, and the next, the next thing you know, they got a kick across the back of the legs. You know, but it goes on. It still goes on a wee bit, but it's not as not as physical. It's too many cry babies in football now. <laughs> felt like it's a, a fella fifty fifty chills. Next thing you hear some player yell, catch yourself on you know, uh, it. Just like, go on with it. Nothing. You know, get, get up and get on with it. You know, yeah. Stop making a wee boy, or, boy yourself. <laughs> but as I said, I enjoyed them. I, just, I enjoyed the matches. I was referees used numerous times. The only yeah. uh, well, probably a, a thing I'm going to do, as, 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 I don't say regret, it's not very really regret. I had, a, I had a, 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 a book, an album, and I kept everything in it, even from the playing days, yeah. photographs of the matches. And, Write ups in the papers. I went, I went missing. I landed the fellow to write a to, to, to write a history of the Mario Man I was, and it right. disappeared. The fellow's now dead. I don't know where it is. So. I had photographs and that there. 
I remember. I don't know if you remember the old news of the world newspaper, Sunday newspaper. Yeah. The old news of the world the first three pages were filled with uh, a, a lot of a lot of naughty things. Let's put it like that. You know what I mean? Uh, but I got my photograph in it. But it wasn't in the first three pages. It was the back page. It was a just cut line against Limbo Body. If you think I see it, was it was one for the camera. You know, up, full length dive. You know, yeah. one took a photograph at the time. And I don't have that. You know, so things like that I regret. The, the old summer league teams, the five or eight teams, things yeah. like that. There. And, well, I'm, I still have a few. I've put a few photographs. I've had a few on Facebook. You know, of, of the the more young men team. Yeah. Of the old Land Bag team at one two A and one one B photographs of them with the sun in it and there's only a baby and things like that. But I have to regret not having that book, you know. Yeah. Uh, maybe someday some somebody will turn it up somewhere, throw it in the bin. <laughs> no, I'm not sure we'll want to see all the, the photos in it. Well I look forward maybe hopefully hopefully I will I will be up to the playing fields when you start when you start again. So well because it's as I said, it's only around the corner. Due to start the 21st of November, apparently, yeah, the league is due to start the end, yeah, so. uh, yeah. What about the two of the two appeals? You have Green Island and... Uh, Green Island, Missouri, well, Island. apparently they haven't been heard yet, so that could, that no, could change. That, that could, and Jim, mm. Jimmy has an or appeal in, I think, appeal in against an appeal, something to do with the right. money. They've been asked, the AFS claimed there's 21,000. Yeah, like the that. amateur league last as Nate said, I think you know, twelve thousand for Aye, but this, this uh, he, he had it in twenty one, so he had yeah. with, the, with the IFA's fee and all on it. You know, yeah. I mean Rosario and thing have paid that to date. Right. So I, I, I it's know. still gonna rumble on for a wee while anyway. It rumble but... on, I it rum, rumbles on oh, into the new year. But you can you could have just a league and that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Play play I know I, I saw their idea of spending two playing each other twice. Depends yeah. what time you have. Exactly. Well, that so, that's the that's what they're going with at the moment. That that was passed last night. So um, that, that could change dramatically. You know what I mean? It could like do. A, yeah. The league normally starts intermediate league starts August. Yourself starts September. Yeah. You know, you've lost all that. You know, lost that time. Yeah. time. Especially intermediate league. Mm. And there's the there those boys are still they're still playing their Irish Cup. Yeah. And rounds they're still, they're, they're still playing their Steel and Sons. They're actually playing then. You know, we get the really playing friendlies in between them. So I don't know. I, but as I said, life comes before football. True. I used to say football before life, but when you see so many people down, you know. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's, it's difficult if you know, to yeah. take in. I know they're not. People are. I hate even hear people saying it's all a scam. It's not a scam. <laughs> people are down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And well, hope, hopefully they can do something before. Right. Yeah. Before, before November. Fingers so crossed. You go. Fingers crossed. Fingers Jim, crossed. Um, thank you very much once again. Um, you never got asked me a question. Some of the boys asked. But, oh, to be honest, it was it was mostly the the good questions were mostly <laughs> um, mostly just things about um, like toughest players you refereed against or um, bit, some of the best players you've seen. Um, mm-hmm. So it's we've we've, we've covered most of it to be honest. We have, yeah, so. one of them still I saw one of me I had on of somebody put on. But what does the player say to you when you send them off? Well, what's the best? Yes, yes. What's the best thing a player's ever said when you've been sent off? Yeah. There's something I couldn't tell you because you could you'd have to cut them <laughs> out. You know, right? uh, most most players will go off. They'll, they'll utter a few words. Yeah, you're and that, you're F and that, You know what I mean? You know what you you know. Your F and wife must be blind, you know, like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, she's, she picked me, mate, not you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, I always have to come back with something, you know. Yeah. yeah well, as I said, hopefully, hopefully, you just, you just get started again. I'll be up at the playing fields, up in the sea, is so well. I'm, I'm, I'm no doubt about that. Rather, the, the young men, they can open their bar and always have a wee drink in there. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, See, see old faces, see Fenty with his bandages and his, his, his crutches <laughs> and, and, on, and, and still trying to play. Still trying. <laughs> okay. Jim, thank you very much. No uh, the podcast is sponsored by Runners Ross Driving School and Drumbo Park Racecourse. We'll be back with another interview next week. Thank you. <laughs>